Welcome. Today we shall be looking at the 10 common electrocardiogram rhythms that are quite important in your clinical practice. The first rhythm is a normal sinus rhythm. A normal sinus rhythm is characterized by a heart rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute, regular rhythm, and the presence of upright P waves before each QRS complex. This rhythm indicates a normal electrical activity originating from the sinoatrial node. Its clinical relevance is that this is the baseline rhythm and there's no any intervention required. The second rhythm is a sinus bradycardia. A sinus bradycardia rhythm represents with a heart rate below 60 beats per minute. While this can be normal in athletes, it may also result from medications or vagal stimulation. If it's symptomatic, treatment includes the use of atropine administration. And you need as well to monitor for hypotension and dizziness. The third rhythm is a sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia features a heart rate that exceeds 100 beats per minute with a regular rhythm and the common causes include fever, hypovolemia, pain and anxiety. Its management focuses on treating the underlying cause that has caused this rhythm. The next rhythm is an atrial fibrillation. An atrial fibrillation is identified by the presence of irregularly irregular rhythms without distinct P waves. It increases the risk of thromboembolism and stroke. The management includes the rate or rhythm control and the use of anticoagulation therapy. The next rhythm is an atrial flutter. An atrial flutter exhibits a sore tooth flutter waves, typically with an atrial rate of between 250 to 350 beats per minute. The ventricular rate in this rhythm is regular or sometimes it can be irregular and treatment, cardioversion and the use of an anticoagulants. Then we have supraventricular tachycardia or SVT rhythm. A supraventricular tachycardia presents as a rapid heart rate between 150 to 250 beats per minute with narrow QRS complexes. There are no clear P waves and the treatment includes the use of vagal maneuvers, adenosine administration and synchronized cardioversion. Then we have ventricular tachycardia which is characterized by a wide QRS complex, a rapid red, and a stable ventricular tachycardia may be treated with antiarrhythmic ventilations, for example, amiodarone, while an unstable ventricular tachycardia is treated with immediate cardioversion. In case of a pulsed ventricular tachycardia, we treat as a cardiac arrest with CPR and defibrillation. Then we have a ventricular fibrillation. A ventricular fibrillation or VFib is a life-threatening arrhythmia with a chaotic, disorganized electrical activity with no pulse, no cardiac output, and requires immediate defibrillations with cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The prognosis for patients with ventricular fibrillation depends on the time to shock these patients. We then have an asystole. An asystole or a flat line indicates no electrical activity in the heart, and this is an unshockable rhythm requiring high quality CPR together with the epinephrine administration. You need to confirm the presence of asystole with the use of two leads. Then we have a pulseless electrical activity, which presents with an organized electrical activity on the electrocardiogram without a palpable pulse. The management involves the CPR and addressing the reversible causes known as the H's and T's of cardiac arrest.